Two best friends, Emily and Luna, came to a popular and expensive hair salon. At first, the administrator told the girls they had just one available hairstylist. But after making a phone call, she happily announced she had found another hairdresser. Emily and Luna could have their hair done at the same time. But in the process, it dawned on the girls that one of the hairstylists was fake. Which one? Hairstylists are using regular scissors, but instead of hairspray, the one on the left is holding a can of bug spray. Yeah, that's a big clue right there. Mary and her younger brother Alex were mushroom hunting in the forest. They started to quarrel, so Alex got angry and ran away. After several minutes, Mary rushed after him. She was still fuming but also worried. Soon, the girl reached a small river. A man was sitting on the shore. Did you see a teenager here? Mary asked. Yep, he's just taken a boat and made it to the other side. But Mary didn't believe the man. Why? The boat is indeed on the other side, but the paddles are lying next to the man. How could the boy cross the river without them? Three prisoners are sitting at a table having dinner, but one of them is wealthy. Can you guess who it is? It's not the guy with the steak and shrimps. The little tag on his shirt reveals he's a chef, and he likes to prepare a special treat for himself. The guy with the jewels shows that he's well off, but in prison, jewelry is basically worthless. It's the third guy. Wealthy people try to keep a low profile in prison, not to be targeted by others. That's why he doesn't flash any valuable possessions or his status. It's Friday and all the students have gathered in a big lecture hall to take the end of term exam. The teacher has been informed that one student is going to cheat. Can you tell which one? Pay attention to every detail. It's student C. It looks as if he's trying to remember what he's read, but he has all the answers written on his hand. Marta was walking through the park near her home in the evening. It was dark and there was nobody around. Suddenly, someone grabbed her from behind and they bolted away. Marta oh no! took off after them. She was pretty sure this person was a woman, but she couldn't make out her appearance or clothes. When Marta ran inside, she saw three teachers. The girl looked at them attentively and soon figured out which one of them had taken her bag. Can you do the same? The woman in the middle wouldn't be able to run away with a cast on her leg. The one on the right doesn't have anything in her hands. Where would she hide Marta's bag so quickly? But the woman on the left has a big shopper bag on her shoulder. A real teacher wouldn't need to carry it in the classroom. So she was definitely the one who took the bag. Jonathan sneaked out of the house late in the evening to meet his girlfriend. The teenager thought he was extremely careful and quiet, but his whole family knew about his plan. They were aware the guy would return at midnight, so they decided to make a bet. The one who would see Nathan first when the guy started climbing the fence would be the winner. The prize would be no chores for them for one week. So as to not fall asleep, Nathan's dad switched on the TV. The teen's grandfather settled in the living room to read a book. The grandmother went to the kitchen to make a pizza, and Nathan's mom went to her room, sat down on the floor, and started to meditate. Who's going to be the first to spot Nathan when the time comes? Nathan's mom. Her eyes will be used to the darkness, and she will see better than the others. Look at this picture closely and try to figure out who's from the future. Well, I'm pretty sure there was no flashlights in the Stone Age, so it has to be this guy here. Down in the Sea Kingdom, Stacy met Neptune. He was sitting on his throne, surrounded by three mermaids. Neptune asked Stacy to return the pearl necklace to his wife, who had recently lost it. Luke happened to have found the necklace on the shore. Can you guess which mermaid is Neptune's wife so Luke can give it back to her?
It's the third one. She's the only one who's wearing an engagement ring. Lisa was a famous top model. She was found unconscious in her dressing room during a photo shoot and taken to a hospital. Doctors said she had a severe allergic reaction. But when Lisa came to her senses, she insisted she hadn't eaten anything all day. The model's manager was very concerned and interrogated everyone who'd been around. Lisa's stylist said that she had applied Lisa's makeup and indeed hadn't seen her eat anything. The cleaning lady said she had cleaned the dressing room with organic, non-allergenic products. Lisa's main rival, Nora, said that she'd been watching the shooting all day long. She hadn't noticed anything suspicious. Who's the culprit? It was the stylist. Lipstick was the only thing Lisa could have swallowed that day. In the middle of the night, Dennis woke up because of a loud crash. One of the kids must have been out, but they know they aren't allowed to leave at night. The man went to check on the children. All three of them, Catherine, Ruth, and Larry, seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Look at the kids and try to figure out who sneaked out of the house. It was Ruth. There's a dirty sneaker hidden behind the curtain and several pieces of french fries under her bed. Brenda was traveling by train. It was scorching hot in the carriage. The girl took off her gold bracelet decorated with diamonds and put it on the table in front of her. Several minutes later, the train entered a tunnel and it got pitch dark. When the tunnel was left behind, there was no bracelet on the table. Brenda was shocked. Someone's taken my bracelet! There were just three other people in the compartment. Helen said she'd been sleeping. Rachel was reading a book on her phone, and Gregory had gone to the bathroom even before the train entered the tunnel. Who took the bracelet? It was Helen. At first, she had her sleeves rolled up, but now they're covering her arms down to the wrists, hiding the bracelet. Sarah bought some ice cream on Saturday, but kept the flavors in secret. When she woke up on Sunday, all the ice cream was gone. She asked everyone in the house if they knew anything about it. James answered he had gone to work early that morning and hadn't seen anything. Mary said she wanted to have the new caramel ice cream in the afternoon. She felt bad she was going to miss it. John didn't even know there was ice cream in the house. But he was looking forward to trying it. Can you figure out who knows something? It's Mary. The ice cream flavors were a secret. She couldn't be sure there was a caramel taste among them. Can you tell who's a real mermaid here? The second one is a guy, so he definitely isn't a mermaid. The girl on the right is chilling in the sun, and she's out of the water. Mermaids wouldn't do that because they dry out in the sun. So the real mermaid must be the one on the left. There were some thefts at the supermarket. There were three cases in total, in January, April, and June. The security camera recorded these videos. The security officer tried to have a closer look and suddenly noticed one detail. After that, the identity of the thief became clear. What did he notice? It was the pregnant woman. The attentive security officer noticed that in January, she looked about six to seven months pregnant. In June, she looked the same. Hmm, seems like it's the mysterious case of the baby bump that was really a canned ham. One day, a thief decided to rob the local bank. He came up with a brilliant plan to dress up as one of the bank tellers and try to sneak into the vault. As he was approaching the vault, he saw a security guard standing right in front of the door. The robber hadn't anticipated this, so he hid and watched the guard carefully when one of the actual bank tellers walked up to the door. The security guard said 12. The worker answered 6 and got in. Then another teller came up to the vault. When the security guard said 6, the person answered 3 and was granted access. The thief nonchalantly walked up to the security guard when the guard said 10. 
The robber confidently answered, five. He was arrested immediately. So why was the thief's answer wrong, and what could he have answered instead? The response has to do with the number of letters in the word. 12 has 6 letters, so the answer is 6. 6, in turn, has 3 letters, so the answer is 3. Well, you can see by now that the robber should have said 3. Looks like he wasn't as brilliant as he thought. Well, well, you're a private detective. You work in a city inhabited by people and magical creatures. You're going to have a rough night. The full moon is coming. It's the time when people and monsters go crazy. Like any detective, you write down your guesses in a diary so that you can summarize the results later. It's afternoon now. You're sitting in your office. Lightning strikes in the sky and someone knocks on the door at the same time. A pale woman enters the room and asks for help. You notice a bracelet on her arm. Her zombie brother is accused of stealing some jewelry, but she's sure he is not guilty. She asks you to prove it. You arrive at the store. On a broken display case where the jewelry used to be, you notice fingerprints. There are three suspects, a werewolf, an elf, and a zombie. Which of them is the thief? The elf. The zombie has skeleton hands, and the werewolf has hairy paws. Only the elf could leave human-like fingerprints. You drive through the streets and see a group of suspicious people standing by the riverbank. You stop and get out of the car. The people notice you and sprint in the opposite direction. You run after them on the sand along the water but can't catch up. You look around but don't see anyone. Then you figure out it was your hallucination triggered by long sleepless nights. How did you figure that out? You ran after these people on the sand, but you can only see the footprints of your boots. You're walking back to the car and hear some screams coming from the water. A woman is calling for help. You run into the river and swim toward the drowning woman. But when you approach her, you see three people. They're all screaming, but only one of them is a real human and needs help. The rest are mermaids who want to lure you to their kingdom. How can you find out who the real woman is? Dive and check who has a fishtail. You save the woman and go to the car. It starts raining. You don't want to catch a cold, so you decide to change your clothes in your apartment. But suddenly, you hear someone scream for help outside. You run out of the apartment and forget to lock the door. A woman is crying in the street. She's standing near the road. In the distance, you can see a car leaving at high speed. The woman says her new car has just been stolen. You get into your vehicle and start chasing the criminal. The suspect gets out of the car and runs toward an abandoned house. He climbs over the fence and disappears inside. You go there after him. In a small hall, five zombies are walking in different directions. But zombies don't drive cars. One of them is the thief pretending to be a zombie. Who is it exactly? Zombies don't sweat, but one of the creatures you see is covered with sweat. That's because it's the criminal who has been running away from you. You walk through the streets. There's a warning on a post about lizard people charging at the inhabitants of the city. You remember investigating this case, but you couldn't find these reptiles. Now you need to go to the park. For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents there. You know that the werewolf has a wife and she is the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on this girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're hungry. You drop by a pizzeria. 
The owner of the restaurant says that someone has taken all his weekly earnings from the safe. The thief wore gloves and left no fingerprints. The video cameras were turned off. You know this pizzeria has had several similar incidents over the past year. Every time, the insurance company paid the owner the entire amount that had been stolen. You're sure the owner took his own money to use the insurance again. Take a look at the office and prove that the owner is guilty. Look at the air vent. Behind the grated hatch, you can see the bundles of the stolen money you've been looking for. There's a long night ahead, and you're feeling sleepy. You go to a small cafe to get coffee. You give the money to the saleswoman and take the cup with the drink. You take a sip and realize the woman is in danger right now. How do you know that? Help me is written on the cup she's just given you. You decide not to leave the cafe and sit down at the table. You can see a man in a black raincoat and hood sitting at the other end of the room. The girl behind the cash register is looking at him wearily. You look at this visitor for a few seconds and realize he's a vampire. What makes you think that? It's night outside. You can see your reflection in the window. The hooded man is sitting by the window, too, but isn't reflected in it. He's a vampire. The coffee has cheered you up a little. You're walking along the street, lost in thought. That's why you don't notice an open maintenance hole in front of you. You fall and find yourself in a dark sewer. Pew! Fortunately, you're not hurt. Shh! You can hear some noise at a distance. You turn on your flashlight and slowly walk forward. Soon, you come across a cage with several people inside. They say a mad scientist caught them and put them in this cage to conduct experiments. You need to free the prisoners. But where can you find the key? Carefully inspect the laboratory. One of the jars with chemicals standing on the shelf has a key inside. You take it out and are about to open the cage, but the scientist returns. He tells you not to do this. The people inside are actually mutant lizards. The scientist admits that he accidentally turned regular crocodiles into humans. The scientist managed to catch these monsters and put them in this cage. He's going to turn them back into reptiles and let them go. The prisoners say they are humans, and the scientist lies. Who do you believe? You decide not to open the cage. Inside, next to the people, you can see pieces of faded skin and scales. Snakes and other reptiles shed during molting. You believe the scientist, and he promises that he will soon fix everything. You're back in the street. It's as dirty and uncomfortable here as in the sewer. Nearby, a bolt of lightning strikes something. You hear someone screaming and run there. A multi-story building is on fire. An old lady is crying. She's left her cat in the apartment. Firefighters may not be able to save it, so you decide to do it yourself. You go up to the top floor using an old fire escape. It collapses behind you. Fortunately, you manage to jump into the window. You're in the old lady's apartment. Several floors lead to different rooms. You don't have time to check each of them. The fire is getting closer. Where is the cat? That door is scratched at the bottom. Those are claw marks. The cat must be there. You open the door and see a big black cougar. The fire is everywhere, and you can't go out through the main entrance. There is a window leading to the backyard and a fire escape. Where will you go? The fire escape collapsed when you were trying to get into the apartment. In the window, you see the tree. It has stopped raining, but it's already morning. Tired, you reach your apartment. You turn the key, open the door, go inside, and realize that someone is here. How have you found out?
you were in a hurry and forgot to lock the apartment door while leaving. Someone got in and locked the door from the inside, and you had to use the key to open it. You see a human silhouette standing in the shadows and realize that you know this person. Who is it? It's the woman who asked you to help her brother. She was wearing a red bracelet. The silhouette has the same accessory. I came here to thank you in person. The door was open, but you weren't at home, the woman says. She asks, how many puzzles have you solved tonight? You realize it's time to look at what you've got. 0-3 to three points. It's too early for you to go out to patrol the streets of a dangerous city and help people. You need more experience. Practice and solve more logical puzzles. 4-8 to eight points. Not bad. You've solved more than half of your cases. The city is grateful for that. 9-11 to 11 points. You're one of the best detectives in this city. Every day, you help people, but you feel that you can do better. 12-14 to 14 points. The sirens of police cars, screams, suspicious faces in dark alleys. You can't live without it, and the city can't live without you. Okay, bad news. You got taken. No time to explain. Let's just get out of here. So you find yourself in a dark cell with a dirt floor and a small window at twice your height. There's no food or water, but there's a shovel. Why did they leave the shovel? Don't ask me, I don't know. Just be happy you have it. (laughs) However, you can't dig your way out because the walls go a long way underground. So how do you get out? You can still dig and make a high dirt pile that will make you reach the window and get out of there. So you do just that and find yourself in a dark corridor. You have nothing to do but to go straight, hoping that sooner or later you'll find the exit and get out of this creepy place. Half an hour later, you approach a metal door. You have to enter the passcode, but here's a hint. Berlin, 600. Paris, 400. London, 600. Rome, 200. Toronto, hmm, what's the passcode? Each consonant in the word gives 200 points, while each vowel takes away 100 points. In the word Toronto, there are four consonants that give 800 together. Three vowels take away 300 points. So the passcode is 500. The door clicks and you leave another obstacle behind. Soon, you approach three more doors. Behind the first one, there's an iron block with a movement sensor that will crush everyone who enters. Behind the second door, there's an electric shocker that never misses. Behind the third door, there's broken glass all over the floor. Which way do you choose? You pick the third door, obviously. You're wearing some boots, right? So walking on the glass is definitely not going to be too hard of a task. You follow the tunnel till you reach the next room. As you step in there, a metal cage falls down from the ceiling and traps you inside. However, there are three buttons there. The red button will open the cage, but it'll also open a door with a hungry lion. The blue button will fill the cage with water for 10 minutes, and only then will it open the door. However, keep in mind that people can only live 7 minutes without oxygen. The green button will set the room on fire, but will open the cage door in 5 minutes. Which one do you choose? You should choose the blue button. The water won't be able to fill the cage because it will just splash outside. You'll only have to wait 10 minutes until the door opens, and you'll be able to get out safely. You turn right and immediately bump into a huge guard. Your heart skips a beat, and you get paralyzed with fear. To your surprise, the guard looks down at you and asks, Wanna pass? Speechless, you just nod. Okay. You see, no one here wants to play riddles with me. If you solve one of my riddles, I'll let you go and won't tell anyone I've seen you. Deal? You nod again, and here comes your riddle. 
What is that invention that lets you see right through walls? That's a window, of course. The guard smiles and says, Beware of the vampires. Then he moves aside, letting you go. Wow, that was close. And vampires? This gives you chills. But you have to keep moving and get out. And again, another door that requires a passcode. Can you crack it? There's a hint again. You should continue the sequence. O-T-T-F-F-S-S-E-N-T Each of these letters is the first letter of the numbers. O for 1, T for 2, T for 3, then 4, 5, and so on. The last stands for 10, so the next four are E, T, T, F. 11, 12, 13, and 14. Yep, that's correct. The door clicks open. Move! You get into a huge dark room. All the light comes from the candles the room is filled with. The problem is that there are four ways, and again, you don't know which one to take. Suddenly, each of the doors opens and four people walk into the room. There are two men, one woman, and one teenage girl. They all say they're prisoners too, and the other three are vampires. Who do you trust? You should trust the second man. He's the only one who casts a shadow from the light of the candles. The other three don't, so they must be vampires. So you rush to the man and you shut the door behind yourself. It'll probably slow them down for a while. As you're running, the man tells you he's been here for at least three days. The next obstacle is something he couldn't solve by himself, so he couldn't get out. There's just one try, and if you fail, the exit gets blocked for 24 hours. Finally, you come across another door with a robot guarding it. To let you go, the robot needs you to say the password. The tricky thing is that the password is different each time. The man said that as he was hiding in the room, he saw the vampires passing it twice. The first time, the robot said 12, and the vampire said 6. The other time, the robot said 6, and the vampire said 3. When the man approached the robot the last time, the robot said 8. The man replied 4, but the robot didn't let him in. The door got blocked, so it wasn't the right answer. You nod and approach the robot. The robot says 4. What is your answer? The answer is 4. The rule isn't dividing the number by 2 but saying the number of letters in the word. Your answer is accepted. The robot opens the door and lets you go. Again, another dark room. But as you step into it, you get surrounded by eight hungry dogs. In the middle, there's a meat cake standing so high on the table that the dogs can't reach it. To calm them down and make them your friends before they make you their dinner, you have to feed them the cake. But here's a tricky thing. The knife is magical and can only make three cuts. After three cuts, it disappears. Your task is to divide the cake into eight equal pieces with these three cuts. How can you manage that? With one cut, you cut the cake in half and get two pieces. Then you make another perpendicular cut and get four pieces. With your last move, you have to cut the cake in the middle horizontally, splitting each of the four pieces into two at once. (laughs) Great job! Now, give each of the dogs a piece of cake and get out of there immediately. You rush to the door and lock it behind yourselves. You're in a tunnel again, and this time there's no light at all. You move in complete darkness, putting your hand to the wall so that you know where to go. You walk like that for at least half an hour when, finally, you see some light. You run towards it and come across another massive door that requires a passcode. Luckily, there's a hint again, but there will be two questions appearing one by one. To get the passcode, you have to solve both of them 
and put the answers together. Ready? How many months have 28 days? All 12 of them, obviously. Okay, next one. Here's the sequence of letters. S, M, H, D, W. What are the other two letters? S stands for seconds, M for minutes, H for hours, D is for days, W is for weeks. So the next letters are M for months and Y for years. And the full passcode is 12MW. The door clicks and you're outside. Finally! There's actual air and sun. But before you start thinking about what happened and what to do next, a police officer comes up to you. With him, there are two ladies wearing paper bags over their heads. Sir, are you Mr. Jones? The police officer asks. You reply, that's you exactly. However, the police officer looks suspicious. Well, we can't know for sure that you're not one of these criminals pretending to be someone else, so we have to test you. One of these ladies is your bride. Tell us which one it is. And now, you finally remember what happened. It was your wedding morning. You were about to get married, and then you found yourself in that dungeon. Well, the problem is that you haven't seen your wife-to-be wedding dress yet, so you can't even tell which one is the right one. Is there any other way to tell? Think carefully. With their faces covered, these girls are absolutely identical. You didn't need much time. You notice that one of the girls is wearing a wedding ring already. However, you and your bride aren't married yet, so she's not supposed to have one. And the one who doesn't have it is yours. Congratulations! The girl removes the bag, and you see that it's really her. Right behind you, the door opens, and the vampires walk out. You're about to start screaming, but they take off their wigs, and they turn out to be your friends. So, was it all a prank? Well, yeah, it was. But don't be mad. You had fun, right? Well, most of the time. Liza was working as a teaching assistant at a college. One day, she had to look after a group of students who were writing an exam. Liza knew some of them were going to cheat. And indeed, soon after the exam started, the girl spotted one person who was cheating. Who is it? It's the guy in the back of the classroom. He's got the answers written on his ruler. Can you figure out which of these two watches is real and which is just a toy? The watch on the left is a toy. Look at its minute hand. It's too long and won't be able to pass all the way around the watch face. In a small village, there were four people who were suspected of being werewolves. One night, the village held a meeting to decide which of them was the monster. Here is what the suspects look like. This person has long, sharp fingernails and is known for being able to run extremely fast. This person has long, sharp teeth and is known for being able to see in the dark. This person has wild, unkept hair and is known for being able to jump high. And this person has a deep growling voice and is known for being able to smell things from far away. Can you figure out which of them is the werewolf? Suspect B is the werewolf. The description of long, sharp teeth and being able to see in the dark are both typical characteristics of werewolves in mythology and folklore. While the other suspects have unusual traits as well, they are not necessarily associated with werewolves. Joe has a friend, Lucas, who never answered any questions directly. Once, Joe sent Lucas a message inviting him to join their common friends in a cafe. Lucas's answer was kind of weird. Sorry, no money. J-O-B-I-N-J-O-B. Luckily, 
Joe knew his friend well enough to understand what he meant. But can you figure it out? Lucas meant he had no money because he was in between jobs. <laughs> Look at this bizarre wedding. What do you think? Why are these people, who are about to get married, wearing black balaclavas? Look, there are cameras on the walls. This couple must be hiding their identities. Three friends went for a walk in a forest. People said a wizard lived there, and he wasn't a kind, friendly person. But our guys didn't believe these rumors. Everyone knows magic doesn't exist. Suddenly, a wall of fire blocked their way. Look at the things the friends have and try to figure out what they can use to put the fire out. They could use this bucket to bring some water from that puddle. But it wouldn't be enough to put out such a large fire. This hose is useless, there's nothing to attach it to. The friend should choose this spade and use soil to put the fire out. You're in a forest. Suddenly, it starts raining. You notice a cave and hide there. But as soon as you get inside, the opening behind you closes. There are three tunnels in front of you, and one of them leads to freedom. But the first tunnel is full of crocodiles that haven't eaten in two years. In the second tunnel, there is a hungry lion that hasn't had any food in two weeks. And the third tunnel leads to a scorching hot desert. Which tunnel should you choose? You should wait until the desert cools down at night and follow the third tunnel. As for crocodiles, yes, these animals can indeed live without food for up to two years. Lions can also survive for two weeks without eating anything. But before you get a chance to leave the cave, you hear some deafening noise. It's a landslide! The tunnels end up blocked, but you now see three other passages. A fire-breathing, wait, is it a dragon? is guarding the first passage. The second passage is filled with hundreds of poisonous cacti growing there. Their spines are covered with an extremely toxic substance. And in the third tunnel, you can see the red eyes of some very hungry wolves. Which tunnel can lead you to safety? You should choose the tunnel with the cacti. At least they can't move. And if you're careful, you'll be able to walk around the cacti without touching their spines. One morning, Donna came to the office and found a box of chocolates on her desk. There was also a strange note. Hmm, can you help Donna understand who presented her the sweets? Her secret admirer is Ryan. Those are not dates. The number actually means the needed letter in the name of the month. A man told his boss, don't take your planned flight today. I had a dream last night that if you do, it might end badly. Your plane will crash. The boss fired the man. Can you figure out why? The man was a night watchman. He should have been on duty the previous night, not dreaming. Jacob and Mark decided to go on a camping trip. Look at the things they're going to take with them and say what they should leave at home. A small hint, try to think outside the box. Look, a tent game, rice, lamp. All of these words consist of four letters. But a chair? This word has five letters. The friends should leave it at home. Now, you're tied up on some railroad tracks and can't wriggle free. There's a train heading your way and it doesn't look like it's stopping. 
Oh well, if you stretch your arms out, you can just reach a lighter, a small pocket razor, and a can of oil. Which can you use to escape? Pour the oil on the ropes holding you down. It'll act as a lubricant, and you'll be able to wriggle free. Taylor finished another awesome ice fishing session. He packed up his gear and walked back home with his dinner. Halfway back to the car, he realized he was being followed by a hungry cougar. It started chasing him. Taylor was so close to his car, but the cougar was gaining on him. What should he do? He should fling the fish to the side to distract the cougar. Then he should ditch all his gear. It's just slowing him down. That way, he's got a chance of making it to the car before he turns into cougar chow. Well, you find yourself in a pitch black room. The room is huge and there are many hallways and corridors leading to unknown places. You need to find your way out before the room starts heating up like an oven. You only have two minutes. You can feel some pipes on the wall but nothing else. How can you save yourself? When the pipes start heating up, they'll probably turn red. It'll already be super hot by then, but you'll have just enough time to figure out the layout of the room and find a way to escape. Angela decided to go for a nice walk in the forest. Mm -hmm. About an hour in, she tripped and spilled all her water. No problem, right in front of her was a tiny lake, and close by, a small stream and a cactus. Which one should you use to get herself a refreshing drink of water? She should head for the stream. That lake isn't moving. That means it probably has bacteria living in it. And a single cactus won't have enough water to quench your thirst. Even though the stream is pretty small, moving water is almost always the safest option. What are those things? Oh, paw prints! Those are bear tracks heading to the forest, a wolf print coming out of the forest, and some elk prints heading toward a lake. Well, what's the best place to go if you're not into the whole being eaten thing? Think fast! The bear going into the forest probably scared that large dog off. Oh, you thought those were wolf prints? Mm, not likely. Wolves mostly travel in packs. The bear is most likely chasing the elk, so they'll both end up at the lake. That means the forest's safe for now. You're stuck in a well in a small village, and the water's already up to your knees. There's a rope leading to the mouth of the well, but it's definitely not strong enough to hold you. You look around and find a bucket, some clothing, and a lighter. How do you escape? Shove the clothes in the bucket, tie the bucket to the rope, and light the clothes on fire. Then quickly hoist the bucket up. Chances are, in such a small village, someone will see the smoke and run over to help you. Kate finished her morning hike and decided it was time to go home. She saw a vintage jeep parked by the hiking path. While she was admiring it, a huge grizzly appeared in front of her. The bear didn't seem that interested in her, for now. But that could change any second. There was a large screwdriver on the floor by the jeep. What can she do to make sure the bear won't be interested in her? She can puncture the gas tank with the screwdriver and douse herself in gasoline. That way, the bear wouldn't be so interested in her scent. Eric was out camping and he needed some light to see in the dark. He reached into his tent, but his flashlight wasn't working for some reason and his phone only had 10% battery. He looked around and saw a bottle of water, an empty sandwich bag, his hiking boots, and a pillow. What can he do to make more light? He can take his phone and put it right next to the water bottle. The water inside the bottle will diffuse the light, making it much brighter. Adrian and Jack went rock climbing all day, then realized it was time to head home. After a long walk through the woods trying to get to their car, they realized they were totally lost. They'd never been in these woods before. They didn't have a clue what to do. What's worse, Jack collapsed from exhaustion and couldn't take another step. Adrian tried to lift him up, but Jack was too heavy. Night was approaching. He tried to call for help, but neither phone had any signal. 
his only choice was to venture out and seek help. He checked both gear bags and found a small pick hammer, some ropes, some sturdy locks, and a harness. What should he do? Adrian should put on the harness and tie all the ropes together to make one huge long one. Then he should tie one end to Jack and one end to his harness. That way, if he got lost in the woods, he'd be able to find his way back to Jack. That's one long rope. He knows that an old witch lives in this spooky old house. Nobody really wants to meet her. Mary is in this house right now, but she seems to be alone. How come? Who said witches can't have the name Mary? Back in the day, she was young and beautiful too. Jack has a small shop that sells socks. One day, he decided to attract more people and launched an advertisement. Socks for free. Many people came there, but all the customers had to pay, even though the socks were free. Why? Jack would only give the left sock to his customers. They looked nice and people wanted to buy it. Who needs only one sock after all? A man was driving his car all the way from New York to LA. At the end of the trip, he discovered that one of his car's tires had been punctured from the very beginning. Still, he reached his destination successfully. How is it possible? The punctured tire was a spare one. You're trapped in a room that's slowly getting filled with water coming from a faucet in the wall. There's no windows in the room and the door is sealed shut. You have a mop and a big bucket. So how are you going to get yourself out of this one? Come on, just turn the faucet off. Now it's better. There are five girls in the room. Nicole is talking on the phone, Kimberly is reading, Jessica is playing hide and seek, and Melody is tidying up. What's Sarah doing? Sarah is playing hide and seek with Jessica. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Which number is missing? A small hint, it's not seven. You have seven seconds to do the math. Number 8 is missing. The subsequent number of 567 is 568. Sally works as a barista. This morning, she dropped a cup full of coffee. Luckily, her white shirt wasn't stained, but it took a while to clean up the mess. How come? There were coffee beans in the cup. They ended up right under the counter. Imagine you've just entered a pitch black room. There's an oil lamp, a newspaper, and some kindling wood inside the room. You only have one match. You have to make a tough choice. What to light first? The oil lamp is definitely a good choice, but it's still incorrect. First of all, you'll need to light the match. After the bank had been robbed, the police found the money in the park among cacti. After the police officers arrested all the suspects, they almost immediately figured out who the bank robber was. Can you do the same? This guy on the left has scratches left by cacti all over his body. There are six glasses in a row on the table. The first three are filled with orange juice, and the other three are empty. Your task is to make full and empty glasses alternate by moving just one glass. How can you do it? Take the second glass and pour the juice in the fifth glass. Dennis was at home watching TV. All of a sudden, his wife's super expensive vase fell and broke in their bedroom. He ran into the room in time to see a stranger jump out the window and run away. 
Dennis tried to chase him, but his glasses fogged up because of the cold. That's why he couldn't identify who it was. When the police arrived, they listened to his story and immediately knew he was lying. The man made the story up to not tell his wife he'd broken the vase. How did they know this? Anyone who wears glasses know they don't fog up when you go from a warm room to the cold outdoors. It's the other way around. Adam Nixon, who didn't really like modern art, rushed into the city gallery and caused millions of dollars worth of damage to several paintings. Yet the manager of the gallery thanked Mr. Nixon for his actions. How come? Adam was a firefighter. The water from his hose damaged several masterpieces, but he still managed to extinguish the fire and saved many more exhibits. Dora came from New York to his hometown, Chicago, to spend a week with his father. Three days later, the father called the police and said his son had poisoned himself. The police examined Theodore's things to check if there was anything suspicious. After that, they took the father to the police station for further interrogation. What seems suspicious to them? The officers found a return ticket from Chicago to New York. Theodore wouldn't have bought this ticket if he hadn't been planning to return to New York. Esme was having her usual walk in the forest. And you know what? She got lost again! After wandering around for a couple of hours, she finally found the witch's house. Esme asked the witch to show her the way back home. The witch wanted to make Esme her maid, but she had a problem. She was planning a vacation and wanted to go fishing. Her fishing rod was 13 feet long, and one was only allowed to take things no longer than 12 feet on the train. The witch promised Esme that if the girl found a solution, she'd let her go. What can Esme recommend? Esme was very good at geometry. She advised the witch to put the rod in a 12 by 5 foot box. Diagonally, it fit perfectly. On a Sunday evening, Mrs. Collins was having tea at her friend's house. Her friend suddenly said that she had seen one of Mrs. Collins' daughters in the mall that day. Mrs. Collins got angry because all of the girls were grounded. She asked which daughter it was, but her friend couldn't tell. She wasn't wearing her glasses when she was at the mall. When Mrs. Collins returned home, she asked the girls what they had been doing the whole day. Abigail said she'd spent the day reading. Brianna said she had stayed at school after classes to study a bit more. Charlotte said that she had been practicing for her upcoming piano concert. Who lied? Brianna. It's Sunday. There's no school. A young girl, Tenley, was brought to the hospital after being poisoned. But the examination showed that Tenley hadn't eaten or drunk anything that day. Her sister, Kennedy, said she didn't know anything about the accident. Tenley's friend, Ruby, said, We were at school when Tenley felt bad. Tenley's boyfriend, Archie, said, I haven't even talked to her today. How was Tenley poisoned, and who did it? The girl hasn't eaten anything but she has some lipstick on. That's what contains poison. And the only person who had access to Tenley's room that day was her sister, Kennedy. There was a car accident in a tunnel. The police suspected that one of the drivers, Owen, had fallen asleep behind the wheel. But Owen denied it. I just couldn't see well because of the rainstorm, he said. The police didn't believe him and immediately arrested the man. Why? The accident happened in a tunnel. It couldn't rain there. Someone in the town was stealing cars. 
Every time a car disappeared, its owner would get a message from an anonymous number. In each message, there were two emojis that didn't make any sense. The police tracked the number, and the geolocation led to three houses. They questioned the owners, Mr. Walson, Mrs. Coleman, and Mr. Woolridge. Can you tell who the car thief is? The emojis seem to make sense after all. They're a wall and a father with a son. Combine them, and you'll get Walson. So Mr. Walson must be the one stealing cars. Now let's play the game Who's Less Smart? It's early morning. Tom and Joseph are driving their teenage children to school. Who is not smart? Joseph. His son is not in the car. This father has probably forgotten about the poor guy. Annie and Emma are volunteering in an animal shelter. Annie is feeding the cats, and Emma is washing the dogs. Who is not smart here? Annie. She's giving dog food to the cats. Logan and Anthony are both having job interviews at 4 p.m. Logan is packing some food, and Anthony is ironing his best suit. Who's not smart? Anthony, look at the clock. The interview is going to start in 5 minutes, and he's still at home. Logan is at home, too. But there's still another hour till his interview begins. Noel and Gabriella are cleaning the house. Noel is listening to music while vacuum cleaning the living room. And Gabrielle is washing the windows. Who is not being smart? Noel, the vacuum cleaner isn't plugged in. Ms. Lopez took her students to an art museum. Half an hour into the excursion, a worried museum worker approached the professor. He told Ms. Lopez one of the exhibits, a precious vase, had been damaged. The culprit could be no one else but one of the students. Only three of them came close to the vase, but who ruined it? Maria said, After I looked at the vase, I noticed my makeup was smudged, so I went straight to the bathroom. Antony said, I didn't touch the exhibit. After looking at it, I went to the next room to see the dino skeleton. And Nathan said he had been following Ms. Lopez taking notes. One of these students is lying, but who? Antony, there are no dinosaur bones in the art museum. Someone broke into Samantha's house through the window and stole some valuable things. When the police came, she told them she suspected her younger brother, Sam. The police officers went to question the guy, but he denied everything. I was playing basketball several days ago and broke my arm. It's in a cast now. I wouldn't be able to get into the house. The police officers left, but the next day, one of them saw Sam in a cafe. The guy was still wearing the cast but the officer immediately arrested him. Why? When the police visited Sam, the guy had the cast on his right arm. Now, it was on his left arm. Look at these two families having dinner. One is munching on pizzas with different yummy toppings. The other is having steaks and vegetables. Can you figure out which family is poorer? No matter how tasty the pizzas are, they're still cheaper than large pieces of meat. This means the family eating steaks must have more money than the second one. Keith had a tragic accident when he was a teenager. Unfortunately, it left the guy blind. He was dreaming of being able to see again for years. 
One day, Keith was lucky to find a doctor who told him a special surgery could solve his problem. Keith agreed right away. The surgery went well, and the guy took a train to go home. His girlfriend accompanied him. The doctor told Keith he had to wait for at least three hours before taking the bandages off. Keith was so impatient and excited, he could hardly wait for the time to be over. Three hours later, they were still on the train. And even though his girlfriend was against this idea, the guy wouldn't listen. He slowly pulled off the bandages, and then he screamed and lost consciousness. Why? When Keith opened his eyes, the train was going through a dark tunnel. The poor guy thought he was still blind and fainted. To pass an exam, Dennis has to solve a riddle. 2 plus 2 is the same as 2 times 2. Find a set of 3 whole numbers whose sum will be the same as their total when multiplied. Dennis gave the right answer almost immediately. These numbers are 1, 2, and 3. Tyler was going to his friend's place in the evening when a stranger in a black mask caught him. The next thing the guy knew, he was in a large room, locked in a cage. There were three levers in the wall next to the cage. If he pulled the first lever, he would let hungry lions into the cage. The second lever would fill the cage with water. And the third lever would activate a special mechanism. It would make the top of the cage move down towards the bottom, crushing everyone and everything inside. Which lever should Tyler pull to survive? His only choice is the second lever. All the water will flow out through the bars of the cage. Joan came home one evening and discovered that someone had burgled her house. When the police arrived, first of all, they went to question the neighbors. Victoria said, I was visiting my friend. She lives two blocks away. I came home a couple of minutes ago. Peter explained to the officers that he was ill. He only made a short trip to the pharmacy and stayed in bed after that. Nathan said, My wife and I were preparing for a barbecue party. Our friends were supposed to come to us. But as you see, it's pouring with rain and we had to cancel our plans. The police officers realized that, for some reason, one of the neighbors was lying. Who was it? Victoria. It was raining, and she said she had just come home. But her hair, clothes, and the umbrella, which was standing near the door, were absolutely dry. Mason is a lifeguard. One day, a girl came up to him asking for help. She said someone had stolen her wallet, which she noticed when she was going to go and grab a soda pop. Mason checked the towel where the girl left her stuff, but the only thing he noticed were her own footprints. Is this girl lying to Mason? The girl was telling the truth. Mason had an eagle eye, and he saw a guy with a fishing rod. He must have stolen the girl's wallet. No one wants to go fish in the public beach. Robbers stole a few precious gems the other day. The police were alerted immediately, but they didn't know where to look for the thieves. Suddenly, they got an anonymous email. Check all the bottles in the cars leaving the town. Best regards, Mr. X. At the end of the day, the officers stopped a car loaded with boxes and bottled water. The bottle bottoms were all covered with paint so they thought the gems should be in one of them. The level of water was the same in all the bottles, but when one of the officers placed one of them right next to the box, he instantly realized something was off. What was it? The bottle standing next to the box is much lower than those still inside. The police then found there was a double bottom and the gems were hidden right underneath it. Two friends, Martin and Clyde, had a bet. Martin said he would throw a ball and it would come back to him. He also said there would be no obstacle or wall the ball could ricochet from. Clyde said it was impossible and he lost. How's that?
Martin threw the ball straight up. It obviously came back to him. No magic, just physics. Emily grabbed a really nice muffin at the cafeteria and put it on the office desk. She wanted to save it for later, but when she came back from the meeting, she saw someone had eaten her muffin. There were only three people who could do that, and only one person was telling the truth. Grace said it was Alicia. Alicia said she didn't eat anything. Tina says she didn't eat anything either. Who ate the muffin? It was Tina. Only one person is telling the truth, and it's Alicia. If Grace or Tina told the truth, then there would be two truthful people, but Emily knew only one person wasn't lying. Patrick really wanted to come to a private party, but the security would ask each person if they knew the secret access code. Patrick decided to overhear their conversations. When the person came up to the entrance, the security said six, and the guest said three. Then the security said ten to the second visitor, and the reply was three as well. The third visitor also said three, but the security said two. Patrick thought he was ready to join the best party in town. When he came up to the entrance, the guard said seven, and Patrick replied three. The security didn't let him in. What should Patrick have said to get into that fancy party? He should have said five. The guest needed to count letters. Six, ten, and two have three letters. That's why the answer was three. In the word seven, there are five letters. Ben loved diamonds. For some time, he would spend $5,000 a day on precious stones. At some point, he realized he had too many gems, so he started selling them at $3,000 a piece. Sometime later, he became a millionaire. How is that possible if he was obviously losing money? Before his gem rush, Ben used to be a billionaire. Since he started losing money, he became only a millionaire. A vampire moved to a big city where nobody knew him to start a brand new life. Still, he just couldn't help it and started biting locals every single night. People got scared and invited a private investigator to solve the problem. A couple of days later, Detective Reitman had three suspects. He decided to visit each of them to find out who the vampire was. After visiting all the houses, he was sure he found the vampire. Who was it? Well, the man on the left has loads of garlic in the kitchen, and vampires are scared of it. The second suspect had a lot of silver-plated accessories, earrings, piercings, and a chain. Vampires don't really like silver. The guy in the blue shirt is a vampire. Long ago, in the Kingdom of Riddles, a criminal was caught. The guards took him to the king, who was famous for loving riddles. King Archibald said that if Harry, the criminal, managed to solve his riddle, he would set him free. Harry agreed and Archibald drew a two-foot line on the ground with his foot. The king asked Harry to make this line two times shorter without touching it. In the end, Harry was free. What did he do? Harry drew a four-foot line with his foot, so that the one the king drew got two times shorter. As soon as you open the door, you hear music. It's a waltz, and it's coming from the main hall. Several couples are dancing around in 18th century costumes. Yikes. You decide to try and blend in by hitting the dance floor yourself. Dicka, 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 dicka. Well, after a few seconds, you look around, and your face turns pale. These people are phantoms. How'd you figure it out? Look carefully at the details. You have five seconds. Look down. None of the dancers are touching the floor. They're just floating along. You run out of the hall, climb the wide stairs, and run into a random room. You lock the door and breathe heavily. <sighs> oh, you're starting to have serious doubts about all this mystical stuff. Maybe it does exist. But how is that even possible? A ray of sunlight suddenly shines on a luxurious bed with beautiful linen. Then it hits you. You're tired. Oh, you'll just lie down on the edge of the bed and a 10-minute nap will really help get your head on straight. 
As soon as you close your eyes, though, you hear a rustling in the sheets right next to you. Then you feel a cold hand on your neck. You keep your eyes sealed shut. You're way too afraid to open them. But you pinch yourself to make sure you're not dreaming. The fingers on your neck start squeezing ever so slightly. Oh, that's it. You bolt out of bed. As fast as you can, you whip out your phone and try to record the... uh, whatever it was. But there's nothing. Only an empty bed. Were you sleeping? Or was it real? You notice something. Phew. Oh, it's just a bad dream after all. What did you notice? I'll give you six seconds. The sun was shining when you laid down. Now, it's the full moon that's shining. You were out cold for a while. You leave the bedroom and walk down a long hallway lit by torches and candles. The silence is broken only by the churning of your stomach. Eh, Guess you're hungry. Well, there's a heavy wooden door in front of you, and it's open just a crack. The pleasant smell of food starts wafting its way into the hallway. You go in and find a huge table, decked out with real silverware and porcelain. Oh, the food looks delicious. There's caviar, lobster, fruits, vegetables, different meats, plenty of desserts. Several people are sitting around the table, and as you approach them, they turn around to look at you. They're all Uh vampires! How did you know? I'll give you five seconds to figure it out. The food on the table is untouched. The vampires have been waiting for their most important dish. You! You run. You make it back out into the hallway, then dart down a dark corridor. The vampires are chasing you. They're screaming! You find three doors at the end of the corridor. The first one has a fire symbol on it. The second has a snake symbol. And the third just says, exit. You try to open it, but it's locked. The vampires are closing in. What are you going to do? You have four seconds before you become vampire food. Try the key you found in the vampire's hut. Great, it fits. You run out into the courtyard and lock the door behind you. The moon is hidden behind some thick white clouds. You sneak through the courtyard and open the back gate of the castle. Next to the gate is a sign with an image of a werewolf on it. You walk off as quietly as possible. After about five minutes, you see a long bridge. There's a beautiful woman standing at the other end. She waves to you and motions for you to come closer. But something's bothering you. Could she be a werewolf? So, you can either cross the bridge or head back to the castle. What can you do to find out if she really is a werewolf? You have 10 seconds for this one. Good luck. Wait until the moon appears from behind the clouds. Your intuition was right. As soon as the moonlight falls on the woman, she begins to turn into a... Werewolf! Eh, still kind of cute though. You run back into the castle grounds and close the gate behind you. Okay, reality check. You're in the courtyard, vampires are inside the castle, a werewolf is waiting outside, and zombies are approaching. You're trapped! Why did you even come to such a scary castle? You pull out your phone and start recording a farewell video. You thank your followers for their views and comments. Thanks for subscribing. You admit that mystical creatures do exist and promise that you'll never set foot in a place like this ever again if you survive. The zombies are closing in and the werewolf is breaking down the gate. Oh, awesome. Your fear is gone and you realize that this whole thing is staged. It's all a show. How'd you figure it out? Watch the farewell video again and find the proof that everything is fake. I'll give you 10 seconds to spot the clues. Do you see that big guy with a camera behind you in the tower window? The zombies stop growling. They scream, surprise! They're not zombies. They're just wearing a whole ton of makeup. The gate opens and the woman takes off her werewolf costume and smiles. The vampires come out of the castle, carrying their fake fangs. This whole thing was set up by your fans. They wanted to scare you, and it worked. You're angry at them, but so happy that you're still alive. Okay, let's see how many you got right. One to three points. Eh, It'll be difficult for you to act in stressful situations. Watch more riddles and train yourself to be calm and focused. 
four to six points. Something really bad has to happen for you to lose control. Phantoms don't seem to scare you at all that much. Seven to ten points. You don't even know what fear is, but you do know how to come out victorious in any situation. You have one question for your fans. How did they create that floating effect for those dancers? That was awesome. Your fans look at each other. What? What are you talking about? What do you mean? There were no dancers. A slight